Jeff said, this will be the last question. I think we're doing pretty good on time here. Um, I have about 10 more questions I could ask. Uh, but we, we, we want to kind of give everybody a chance to uh, meet the candidates in person after this. There'll be a little uh, reception uh, right next door uh, as soon as we're done here. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I'm going to just get into this last question and may be able to give you a few extra minutes uh, to, to expound on that. You sort of saw like a broken record talking about the uh, about the strategic plan, uh, but it, 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 it's been a very important uh, part of driving Decatur forward. Two specific goals of that plan are to create a diverse and engaged community, as well as a lifelong community. Aging in place is a, new bu a, a big buzzword now. I think we all know people who grew up in Decatur who couldn't afford to retire here. We know that there are a lot of people who could add to the diversity and engagement who can't afford to move here. We're both blessed and cursed uh, with high property values here, which unfortunately also lead to high taxes here. Uh, I would like for each of you to just talk briefly about how you view this, this conundrum. We have a desire to increase diversity, to allow people of different income levels, different races, different whatever. Um, what do you see as the city's goal in promoting or what ways do you think the city should uh, reach out to promote this goal? So um, I think one of the things that is currently um, going on in the city now, um, the uh, development of some of the particular um, downtown properties with so rental property. We have a, a very large need for more rental units in the city. We have very few of them and I feel like there's a lot of of different income levels that would be helped out by that. Um, they're, they're, because, of, because of our lack of diversity in housing, I think all of us have kind of been affected by this substantially. Um, we have a situation, you know, say in my neighborhood, we've had a couple houses torn down recently, new houses built, and then they're selling for pretty substantial values. And when you kind of go and, and look at that, you kind of think, well, what's going to happen to our community when, you know, say for instance, X number of years, five, ten years from now, when every house costs that much. And it's kind of, I, I saw this kind of happen. Uh, my brother and sister, they moved out to California about 20 years ago. And I watched the communities that they live in, the exact same thing happened, where um, you had the houses were kind of, in, for California, relatively affordable in the neighborhood. And as more and more people moved in, and then kind of the thing that made it so great kind of killed the community because they made these amazing communities, and it was so amazing, and they had such amazing people that lived there, just like Decatur, mm -hmm. that, you know, you ran into a problem where you got killed by the love. And then, so a lot of people moved into the community, the housing prices went up, and then the communities kind of ended up kind of being a little bit soulless and fell apart because they had a lot of, a lot of houses and a lot of people there, that, and they had to pay their mortgages, and they didn't have enough time to engage in the community like they did. <coughs> So I think for Decatur, it's really kind of, it's a big issue. And I think we need to kind of address that and, and think about it a lot. And, um, it, as far as the different housing types and things like that, I think we really kind of need to focus on that. And as far as aging in place, I have a, a kind of very personal story. My mom is here today, and she just recently moved into the city. And um, she um, is going to be kind of a good test case for that. Because what we're planning on doing is, is kind of re configuring um, the house across the street where she can live with us. And some of the recent zoning changes that were happening just recently in the zoning task force related to that are, are directly addressing kind of the aging in place issue where um, people can now make dwellings in their house that are kind of separate from the house and act as a complete separate dwelling so we can kind of have our elders with us. And, um, I also think that I would like to see some more um, tax relief for seniors, um, really based on income. And I feel like that we don't give enough tax relief for seniors now. And I feel like that's kind of a, a big issue. And a lot of people have mentioned to me, talked to me about that. And I feel like our seniors, that's one of the reasons that they kind of get driven out of the community because they get into a retirement situation and then they're on a fixed income. And as the taxes kind of continue to, continue to increase, they kind of get driven out of the community because they can't afford to live here anymore. And I don't think really any of us want to 
see that happen. So I feel like that that is something I think we should take a hard look at and see what we can do for this, the aging senior population related to some tax relief. <coughs> important thing that came up in the 2006 infill task force was the accessory dwelling and we were very very uh, very adamant on that and wanted that for that sole purpose not for the rental unit where you can get an Agnes Scott student to live behind you and <coughs> house a babysitter or, or nanny but to have but to have that 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 family care kind of component to it so I, I was glad to see that that got incorporated um, taxes uh, property taxes for uh, senior citizens has, has, has been an issue that's been brought up. I think it, it, it triggers in your late 70s or even 80s. A lot of people that I've talked to that I've known my whole life here, that have lived here for 30 years, that have you know, paid all the taxes for all that time, their kids are, their kids are gone, they want to stay here, they can't, uh, or, they, or they just can't make it work out. I think maybe we can, we can try and get uh, some of that, uh, some of those um, reductions earlier. It's in staggering them, say, say starting at 65. So I definitely think that's something we've got to look at. But that plays into the big, big budget of the city and, and, and our budgetary process and, and how we have money to pay for things. You know, if we're successful with things downtown, if we've got, if we've got good economic development down there, maybe that can be a relief to it. Um, but those are, those are all concerns. When I grew up here, I was very fortunate. All my teachers, or just about every teacher at Glenwood, lived in the city. That was good and bad. I got. Uh, you know, my mom got called way before I got home. <laughs> and so that, you know, that was before we had text messages and stuff. But, you know, she knew I was in trouble before I got home. Uh, not that I was in trouble that much. Um, <laughs> but they, they lived here. Two of them still live here. My kindergarten teacher, Rhoda Joyner, and, uh, and Miss Jenkins, my fourth grade teacher, still live in Decatur. I like running into them at the uh, grocery store. I just get a little nervous when I run into them. But, you know, that was a great benefit of it. Uh, how do we get affordable housing here? Um, I know a lot of times when downtown developers are looking to do things and they need a little bit of a density push, they'll throw in some, some affordable housing units. And that, 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 that can work sometimes. Um, I think we've got two great opportunities, Avondale Marta Station, East Lake Marta Station. Those are two big areas right on mass transit. Um, we need to make affordable housing component. I know it's been talked about. Those projects are talked about when they're kind of put on the back burner and they're talked about put on the back burner. Um, those would be great things to have in the community. But I think affordable housing is something that, that we've got to push for. Um, the community is diverse, but it's losing some of that. Um, I don't want it. You know, I, that's my vision of Decatur when I grew up here. But we had we had a very diverse community, very diverse school system, and that's what we need to maintain. Those ideas just need to just need to be worth it. Um, there's nothing we can't fix if we don't put our heads together. All right, so um, that gets to the end of our questions, um, and I'm sure there's people behind us that um, are saying, well, why didn't you ask about this or that? And, and we acknowledge that uh, we weren't going to try to ask everything. And again, you know, this was really an opportunity for you all to hear these two guys um, talk together in the same room. And so that's why we've set it up at the meet and greet. If there are specific things that you would like to know more about, they've graciously um, giving up their time to be here and to be over there, and, and um, that'll give you an opportunity to, to, to dive in some more um, at that point. So, um, but at this point, uh, we want to wrap it up, giving you guys an opportunity. You've got a couple minutes here uh, each to, to, to give us your closing remarks. Uh, if there's anything that didn't get said that you wanted to get said, now's the time to say it and, um, and, to, and to put the, put the final sell on it. So, uh, Greg, you first. Um, like I said before, I kind of I feel like that Decatur has arrived. We're kind of at a point where we are a fully mature city, and I think it's it's a very different place than it was 20 years ago. I feel like our um, our businesses or our downtown businesses are, are doing really well. Our housing values have uh, stabilized, and the president came to our school system to really kind of I thought that was amazing. Came and praised our school system, so I feel, feel like that we're um, at a point where we're kind of, it's like a generation, we're kind of starting the next 20 years, you know, we're kind of moving into a new phase. And I, and I really think that this is an important time for Decatur. And um, it's, um, it's kind of an interesting time. And, and I would hope that you would trust me to be your next city commissioner. Um, the, the kids and parents at the city schools, they trust me to do the walk and roll program. Uh, the farmers at the farmers market and the customers weekly, they trust me to um, uh, set up the farmers market weekly. The city commission trusts me enough to appoint me, appoint to me to the uh, sustainability board. And so I, kind of, I feel like that I have earned people's trust and I'm, I'm very comfortable with the city. And uh, I just
just like to say, kind of in closing, that the, um, the this is just having this event kind of is really great. And the fact this whole process has been really kind of amazing. Because I'm really a strong believer that that democracy is it's self-executing, where everybody has to participate. And I think this event speaks to that. And I think it's really about Decatur. The entire Decatur speaks to that. And I think um, this is just this whole event and the fact of this whole election process is really um, just getting to know everybody and just the whole part about it has just been <coughs> amazing. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Well, first off, I want to thank Jeff and Jeff and Dean for putting all this on. Um, the cambridge has got a long history. Um, we had we had boom times and bust times, and you know you're, you're, you, if you don't understand that history and, and, and respect that history and watch that history, those same things can happen again. I think it's our responsibility in this room and as city commissioners or, or on boards and things like that to to watch the growth, think about it, balance our activities, um, think 20 years out. The things we're seeing right now were talked about in '82. I was seven years old. 1982, they were meeting and talking about this Decatur that they wanted to have. Uh, and it took that long to do it. So some things aren't overnight Decatur, and some things take a while to execute. Um, but I think as a community, um, you know, we're a very unique community. When I travel around the southeast, and I've worked in a lot of different towns in Greenville and Athens and Charleston, um, you know, they would always ask me, why? well, I always say I'm from Decatur. But I'm not from Atlanta, I'm from Decatur. Um, Years ago, they didn't. They never heard of the care. Now they do. Now they know exactly what we do. They come and watch us. They look at the things that we do. They call us from Alabama. I remember getting a great phone call from a gentleman in Alabama wanting to, to reinvent the beach party in his town because they needed something like that. So you know, we're we're being watched, and I know that's kind of just a fun event. But I know they 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 look at us for for how we grow our town and how we grow our government and how we work with our community. So that's what we have to do. Um, whether it's Volunteering up on the square for an event, serving on the board, being appointed to a committee, uh, you know, volunteering for the DBA events or anything like that. Give your time. It's, it's not enough just to sit here and, and enjoy the community. Um, and that's sort of how I grew up. Uh, that was the philosophy my father instilled in me. Uh, and that's what I'm bringing to the table and want to carry forward. I had a lot of experience in the city, a lot with different avenues in the city, very broad, with a lot of different groups. and. Um, that's what I want to continue to do and help out any way I can. So that's why I'm here and I uh, appreciate your vote. Y'all have to don't want to talk anymore. I'm sure we want to go. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. And, and again, on behalf of the three of us, I uh, want to thank you all for being here. Thank you.